Rod the Car Guy here, and we need to get something straight right now. Our tires, we need to get our tires straight. Let's do it. Before we jump in, I wanna to talk to you about my new t-shirt. If this image looks familiar to you, then you are probably already a part of the amazing community over on Reddit at the Xterra subreddit. Over there, you're gonna find over 5,000 Xterra lovers that will uh, share ideas with you, share photos, help you out when you run into snags. It's just a great group of people and I absolutely recommend that you go check them out. Down in the link below, you'll find the link. And if you love this t-shirt, you can find the link down there as well to pick this up and rep your favorite truck right on your shirt. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. A lot of great information on here for all you Xterra and Frontier owners. Now, if you watched my suspension lift video, you know that I talked about cam bolts for just a little bit. Uh, today, I wanna actually demonstrate how we can swap these out. Should be a nice, easy job, and I'll tell you exactly how you should have them set if you have your Xterra lifted at least a couple inches. Of course, we need to start by lifting the front end of the Xterra, getting it up on jack stands, and getting these tires off. I just did that by lifting in the center of the cross member under the engine, and of course, just sliding the jack stands into place. Now, if you don't have an impact gun, make sure you break your lug nuts loose before you lift it up. So once that's up, we can just go ahead and zip these lug nuts off so we can gain access to the lower control arm. Now my Xterra came with non-adjustable upper control arms and lower control arms. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and make our lower control arms adjustable. And we do that using camber bolts. Now our original lower control arm bolts look just like this. Just a good old fashioned standard bolt with some washers. Our upgraded lower control arm bolts are adjustable. So you'll see that they're offset and they're kind of sliced down the side to keep those washers in place. So what this is going to allow us to do is slide it into, of course, the lower control arm mount. And then there's gonna be two guides on the side that when you rotate this bolt, it's actually going to push the lower control arm either forward or backward. Popping this out should be nice and easy, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna start on the front, should be nice and easy. The bolt side is actually a 22, and then the nut side is 19. So just slide this on, we'll pull it off. So what's nice is all this is really being supported by your upper control arm and your coilover, so it's actually loose in here. So we can just slide it out, pull the washer off, slide it out this way, Excellent. Grab our new one and just slide it in. Make sure your washer gets on there. Put that nut on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this, but not all the way down, just till, basically till it touches the metal over here. Uh, I wanna do that because of course we need to replace the other one and we need to make sure they're all adjusted before we tighten them down. All right, once that's in place, let's go swap out the other one. Now this side's a little trickier. Uh, the frame comes down and I can't be uh, nice and lazy and get my impact on it. So we're gonna have to go old school and just grab our breaker bar. All right. So again, just grab your new adjustable bolt, slide that washer on there, pull this one out. Slide the new one in, get the washer on the other side and spin this on. The bolts that I have are SPC bolts and those are gonna be 21 on both sides. Let me double check. Yeah, they're gonna be 21 on both sides. Now that the bolt's in place and before we set the settings and tighten it down, I can kind of show you what this is meant to do and how it works. So you'll see two little notches on both sides of the washer over here and you're gonna see a whole bracket on the other side. This of course stops the washer from rotating and instead, this lower control arm is going to come in and out. This is accomplished because the hole in the frame is elongated, so it allows for the movement of the bolt, but not the washer. So if I go left here, you'll see that the arm moves forward. Turn around, go right, and now you'll see the arm moving back. Pretty significantly, actually. That's how we're able to adjust the lower control arm using these bolts as opposed to the old ones. Now that we have those in place, let's talk about how we're gonna have them set. Now these settings are going to be a baseline setting to go get 
a professional alignment. Let me make that clear. Now, unless you have all the proper equipment at home to do a full alignment, you just wanna get these things in place so you can take it to an alignment shop where they can do an alignment with the combination, of course, your new adjustable lower control arm bolts and your tie rod end for the toe in. For that, we're gonna do this. For the rear, we want the wider portion of the washer facing towards the engine. And then in the front, you want the opposite, so the fat part of the washer facing away from the engine. You, of course, do that by just taking your ratchet while it's still loose and then adjusting it. There we go. Until the large portion of the washer is facing the back. Do the same up front by just twisting it until, there we go, until the fat portion of the washer is facing the outside. If we were to just tighten these down right now, they would be tightened down to spec in the lowest position. So basically everything is dropped really, really low. Well, when we put the tire back on and it sits back on its weight, well, the bushings are gonna be under tension basically at all times. Not only are the bushings gonna be under tension in its kind of neutral state, if you hit any bumps, it's just gonna make that even worse. That can lead to at a minimum squeaking, at a worst, tearing your bushings and creating problems with your control arms. So to combat that, we do something called preloading our bushings, which is basically getting this assembly in a relatively neutral position or as close as we can get before torquing down these bolts. We can do that by just getting a jack, sliding it underneath the lower control arm and then lifting up the assembly. Make sure it's underneath and actually resting on the arm versus uh, you know, like your sway bar link or anything like that. Now we've lifted it up, it didn't go up a whole ton, uh, mostly because I have the new um, kind of much stronger springs in here. So the actual exterior itself started to lift. So uh, I know obviously I can't put any more pressure than that on it because the exterior will just get higher as opposed to putting more pressure on the spring. So now that we're here, we just grab our torque wrench, set it to 100 foot pounds and get these things down to spec. Excellent, we have our first one down to 100. And now we just got to do it, uh, well, technically three more times. Woo, it is hot out there. All right, so that's it, folks. Once we have those replaced, now we can go to a professional, get a full alignment done because not only do we have, of course, our tie rod ends to work with the toe in, but now we have our complete lower control arm adjustable for caster and camber. As always, like this video if you liked it, subscribe for more content like this, any comments and questions down below in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one.